Oh man, I've been off the internet for a long time. Why don't we just check <laughs> what's going on in the world? I spend most of my day thinking about, you know, like Chernobyl and looking at papers about Turing machines. Let's see what's going on. Oh, oh no. What? He said what? Well, why would you tell a military facility that you're coming? They'll, they, 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 they got guns. What does glow up mean? Wow, new Twitter is ugly. A live action Lion King with no lions? <laughs> okay. Okay, so they're cats, but they're people, but they're cats. Okay. Did you know, ooh, right back to it. Did you know that cats can't drink alcohol? Or I mean, they can physically, but they definitely shouldn't. You should never leave a uh, drink out in the middle of the night or something like that, just in case they get their little dudes into it and they, they take a little sip sip. Because of cat metabolism, they are unable to process alcohol in the same way, and alcohol for them and dogs can be particularly lethal. Just a tablespoon or so might kill your sweet little kitty. So make sure you're keeping that alcohol away or you know uh fermenting trash so they could get out of a trash like it's a dog like a fermenting apple wait aren't the cats and cats trash cats they're in danger we must stop the movie because of the danger part not because of the weird uncanny valley part Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and make sure that they are all safe for cats before reading them out on the internet. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, it's about one of Batman's greatest adversaries. I bet you can guess who. It's the hardest impression to do, period. I think if you can do an impression of this character, you're pretty much great at impressions. I wasn't trying to paralyze Barbara, honestly, I was shooting for her head. I can't do it. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are evaluating a silly on the surface level question that turned out to be quite fascinating, at least to me, especially when I got water thrown in my face. It was, can Aquaman drown? You can watch the episode for yourself, but I said, yes, there are certainly some scenarios where you could make the king of the seven seas himself suffocate due to inhalation of water. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Kezrek who says, hey Kyle, my man, <laughs> I can dig it. Does this mean Aquaman could also drown in deep sea brine pools? They have so little oxygen and so much salt that most organisms, aside from something like an extremophile, get toxic shock from breathing those deceptive waters. I find it funny that Aquaman could drown in SpongeBob's goo lagoon. Anyway, thank you and good day to you, sir. Yes, yeah, so what Keserek is talking about, and many of you commented the same, are these underwater rivers, kind of, these differentially concentrated bodies of water within bodies of water, like Goo Lagoon is a lagoon inside uh, of Bikini Atoll's waters. I think it's underneath Bikini Atoll because of the radiation that made all the SpongeBob-like creatures. Anyway, if you look at this picture, this is from a cave in Mexico where there is a river, and then at the the bottom of the river, there's a river of salt, salt, salty water, <laughs> which has so little dissolved oxygen in it that it's pretty much toxic to anything that swims through it. And to your point, if Aquaman swam through that, he would suffocate via submersion in water and he would drown in that. Ooh, sounds like another super villainy plot to me. Salt him up! Santiago Ardia says, yeah, I'm calling it. The Void has turned Kyle into a super villain. I mean, first he made a video about how Superman can defeat Batman, then how to kill Wolverine, and now he's doing how to kill Aquaman. Kyle is a super villain and Gary was trying to stop him. Look, I, many of you since the last episode of Footnotes have, have pointed out that perhaps some of my ideas tend towards the super villainy side. And to that I say, you are definitely, definitely on the wrong track. Yeah. No, it's me. Yeah, a bunch of them this time. A dumb dumb discount? How many? Ten dollars? Yeah. No, let's go with something really cartoony this time. I'm thinking, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I have to try to like quickly lure them off the side of a cliff and then they don't realize they're off a cliff until they look down and then they all fall down. Then they make a little poof at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, let's lock it in. Yeah. Love you too. Sorry, I was just uh, subscribing to some magazines. Our next comment comes from Brian CP who says, of course Aquaman can drown. Water isn't the only liquid out there. Just drop him in a sealed vat of crude oil and see how long he lasts. And you're saying I'm the supervillain? <laughs> Pot calling the kettle Aquaman. Leo Vinci says, RIP Chad. Oh man, 
RIP Chad the Shad. 2019 to 2019. He would like to say a few words. I'm going to uh, speak for Leo here. I had not known Chad much, but I know he had a kind heart. And loyal, and loved by many. May we all forever remember Chad in our memories. Chad was a father and a friend. May his children continue to live on in life and in death. Man, I'm not sure those last two bits make any kind of sense. But um, thank you. Our next comment comes from Richard Alvarez, who says, would Aquaman's lungs collapse if he reached the deepest point of the ocean? Well, this is an interesting thing. So if Aquaman did have gills or some other way to breathe underwater, then if he goes deeper and deeper into the water, pressure problems aside, he could still probably breathe. But there is an interesting point about lungs. So when divers go down very far into the ocean, they need to be inhaling pressurized air because you're right, at certain pressures, the human body isn't strong enough to expand the chest cavity enough to draw in air from something like a scuba tank. The water can be so forceful around you that you literally cannot open your chest up enough and you won't be able to breathe. And you can prove this to yourself. You do not have to go deep into the ocean to do this. Say for example, and I'm not suggesting that you do this, but if you made like a four foot long snork snork and then you went into something like a pool, if you went four feet down from the surface, it's already getting heavy enough where you'll probably have difficulty breathing if you can breathe at all. Snorkels are only good because you're very close to the surface and you don't have all of that pressure. If you go down very much further, the pressure from the water will be too much for the atmospheric pressure to push against as you inhale, plus your muscles, and you won't be able to breathe with a long old snork snork. That's why they were called the snorks because they their heads had like snorkels. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I've got to give to you can tell me a little bit later in the comments, who says, yes, but oxygen is only necessary for ATP, adenosine triphosphate, I believe, production. However, there are other ways, such as glycolysis, to produce ATP. And so if some by magical way or superpower, Aquaman can store glycogen more effectively or break down fats more effectively, in theory, Aquaman should be able to not suffocate even with a lack of oxygen. Love you, love the show. Oh, Shlomi Vinar. That's your name. Oh, wait, wait, wait. By the way, if you give me the super nerd title, I will hang a poster of you on my roof. You're gonna get a poster of me and then put it not on your wall and not on your ceiling, but outside on the roof. For this very nerdy comment, and just for the fact that you must send me a photo of my face on the roof of your home, you are indeed a super nerd. Oh, use this. But of course, I'm not always right. I cannot spell the word receipt consistently, and so I just avoid writing it. So what did I get wrong? It's true. And so what did I get wrong this week? Our first correction comes from Justin Does Earth, all of it, who says, I have a correction, but it's for the entire scientific community. Gill filaments should so clearly be called gillaments. I agree. And pipettes should be called pipey boys. All graduated cylinders should be called science tubes. The species name of fire ants should of course be spicy boys. Jupiter's Latin name should be changed to a jupa -jup. And that thing that analyzes what's in that thing that you're shooting with lasers should be called a gas chromatograph mask spectrometrop. They won't let me back into the university. The blazon Ken. <laughs> Nice. Says, you can also drown shark by holding it in place. It lacks gill flaps. It has to keep moving to breathe. Yeah. So I'm gonna correct your correction just a little bit. While it is true that many sharks rely on what is called ram ventilation, nice, they have to move forward to move water over their gills to get enough oxygen from the water. Some sharks do not have to do that, like this beautiful nurse shark that you're seeing here. They can just spend time motionless on the seafloor, moving water past their gills through muscle action, and so they do not have to keep moving. There are some sharks that don't have to keep swimming, although I empathize with them that you gotta keep moving or else you die. Our next correction comes from Bianca Del Monde, who says, just a reminder, Aquaman can't drown, but he can suffocate. There's a difference, and I'm surprised you didn't know the difference. <laughs> Kyle Hill, you're supposed to be smarter than that, but okay, you're a blonde. We'll forgive you. By the way, nice butt. Not a Jason Momoa butt, but still. Hmm. Uh... So, first of all, I did say exactly what you said I forgot to say. It's in the video, you can watch it yourself. Second of all, objectification of people, especially when you are trying to objectify them such that they are seen as less intelligent, is certainly beneath you. 
and it's beneath all of the super nerds here. So why don't you do yourself a favor and, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I know I just called. What, what else do you have to be doing? No, no, it's, it's this person objectifying me on the internet. Yes, I know it happens literally everywhere all the time. No, just, yeah, targeted orbital strike. Yeah, and on the side of the mini asteroid say, I guess blondes do have more fun from Kyle. <laughs> no, they don't sound like that. Close though. <laughs> okay, love you, bye. Sorry, I was just buying a subscription to Girl Scout cookies. Our next correction comes from Super Nerd Science with Steph, who says, all right, Kyle, I have a correction for you. When you are underwater in the video, you can see a bluish tinge in the top half of the screen that gets bluer as you move upwards. Now, I don't know how physics works in the void, but that's not how it works here on Earth. When you dive underwater, red, yellow, and green wavelengths are absorbed by water and organic matter, making the water appear bluer the deeper that you go. The bluish tinge should therefore get stronger towards the bottom of the screen and not the top. Great video as always. Steph, this is why you're a super nerd. Something I didn't even think about, a little detail that I would have loved to get right, but you're absolutely correct. Our depiction of water perhaps doesn't fit with how it looks on your earth. I don't have that luxury. I'm in work purgatory? Workatory? But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to now two-time super nerd, Michaela Engelbrecht, who says, Kyle, if Aquaman's gills are anything like that of a shark's, he could be drowned by simply pulling him backwards for a while or causing water to move over his gills in the wrong direction. Michaela goes on to explain that because fish have evolved to have water moving past their gills in a very specific orientation, moving them backwards can cause a lot of problems, specifically what we were talking about in the episode. If there is a a counter current exchange of oxygen and gases that evolved, if you make that co-current, then the gas exchange won't be nearly as efficient and eventually the fish could either be seriously damaged or just suffocate and this is known to happen to sharks. And what it actually reminded me of, Michaela, is that if Aquaman was anything like a shark, then you could probably put him in a state of tonic immobility, which is this weird state that we don't fully understand that if you turn a shark upside down, it will kind of be paralyzed, almost hypnotized for like 15 to 30 minutes. We think it might be related to mating or as a fear response, something like that. But if you turn a shark upside down, you can paralyze it and it will just stay there, just kind of in a zombie-like state. We've even observed orcas flipping sharks upside down to put them in this state. That's why killer whales are much scarier than sharks in my mind, cause they smart. But the idea of a supervillain dodging Aquaman's throw and then just going hit and just flipping him on his back and he's just like, oh, my man. And just floating there and then you just slowly pull him by the foot in the other direction and he drowns is more super villainy than I ever hoped I could be. So you are indeed, Michaela, a two time super nerd. Yes! I don't think about what gesture I'm gonna make. Now, moving right along, this week's episode of Because Science is, what disease does the Joker have? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are gonna be acting just like the greatest detective of all time, Batman, and we're gonna try to figure out what disease the Joker actually has. The Clown Prince of Crime shows many different symptoms throughout all of his iterations over the years. Can we find a link in these symptoms? Could it be a real disease that could exist in the real world? Does Batman get it right when he diagnoses it? in the comics, movies, and video games. We're gonna figure out all that and more. Nope, just that. And so, go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet all about whether or not you can drown Aquaman, you can, <laughs> and leave me all of your best, nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget, you can't cook a chicken by slapping it. I don't care what you have to say, James the Hacksmith with your fancy editing. Just a few rockets in the back of your hand and you're telling me you can turn un, uh, uh, an uncooked chick chick into a perfectly toasted rotis? <laughs> I call shenanigans on you, James, your move. Yeah. Drop a chicken on him. I guess we'll find out if he's a hack or not. <laughs> <laughs>